remind me to not hit the space bar because that stops my recording on OBS and this is like my 10th try at this video. So anyways, today we're gonna to be looking at Wi-Fi passwords hacked at a local coffee shop, security compromised. Now, one thing that really gets me going is news companies talking about cybersecurity and having no, I guess, background in security. And another thing that I like is stirring the pot just a little bit to get a dialogue going. So let's see what this, uh, this channel says about whatever this article is. A local coffee shop in Old Town is taking extra security measures now to protect the business and customer privacy after its owners say somebody hacked into its Wi-Fi. Fox 12 Sarah Hurwitz is live in downtown Portland tonight with some tips from a security. I, I'm not saying. <laughs> I Okay, let's let's watch it expert Sarah Oh, good evening, Wayne. You know, the owners of Floyd's uh, Coffee, they tell me that that IT hack is alarming on a number of levels. They say as a local business, they really work hard to not only protect their shop, but protect their customers. And this is a breach of their security. It's a staple in Old Town, Chinatown. It's been described as the living room of Old Town. A place the community can come to visit with friends, family, or meet for work and have a cup of joe. Now, I, I'm a huge fan of working in coffee shops. It's so nice, and I feel bad. I don't know what happened, but I feel bad for this small shop, especially, you know, with everything with COVID right now, because I don't know when was this made. This was made, you know, last year, so it sucks, but I kind of have a feeling what happened. Oh, and one of the perks, public Wi-Fi. But co-owner Nicole Tigner noticed that it'd been running slow a few months ago, and it just continued to get worse. And so she called an IT expert for some help. There's someone hacking into our system as we were sitting there. The hacker changing passwords, including ones for their surveillance cameras, gaining access to whoever might be logged on to the Wi-Fi at the time. Dangerous for the business and customers. I want to provide a safe space for for my customers. But that comes at a cost. She says it costs more than $300 a month for commercial internet. I didn't know about this kind of thing. It's not something that when you buy a shop or when you start a business that they tell you in a handbook, hey, cybersecurity is a big risk. One of the easiest things that a coffee shop in this case could probably do is to actually have two different Wi-Fi's. And, and one of those scenarios is what we would call a, a guest Wi-Fi. And that connection would only have access. So with the whole security camera thing and the persistent access, I, I, this, what they're talking about is separating networks. This is a, this is a common thing when you're doing network engineering and, and, and architecture and all that. And you have VLANs, which are different virtual local area networks, VLAN. Um, and you usually separate those by like cameras and end stations and ICS. They each have their own VLAN and the same thing, like, um, you'd have a open network. This attack is not local. This is a remote attack. Just in the internet wouldn't have the ability to access the cameras or point of sale system. Mark Cooper is the president of PKI Solutions, a cybersecurity company. He says it's tough to know a hacker's location. It could be a customer sitting in the shop or someone around the world. And having two internet systems, he says, is one way to protect your business. That's good. They did not say is, it is one way. Because this attack, I have a gut feeling that that the the, the separated networks aren't going to be the solution to this problem. As for customers, he says, really think about what you're doing online in a public setting. If you have any doubt whatsoever, probably whatever you're needing to do from a banking perspective or your identity or healthcare information, maybe that's not the place to do it. Well, I will I will uh, take this with a grain of salt, but. You know, any information that's involving at least payment cards are under PCI standards. And if you were to compare PC, like companies that have to fall under PCI versus companies that don't, PCI to, to, to do transactions with Visa, MasterCard, Amex, all the big payment card processors, each company that does, you know, does transactions have to get a yearly penetration test and reviewed by a third party. Uh, whereas companies that don't really don't fall under any sort of standard. So, and then same thing with um, healthcare, they fall under PHI. You need to get a yearly pen test or a yearly security review, which is kind of vague, but it's still 
you know, they do have some sort of standards that they have to fall under. However, I do agree. Like, you shouldn't be doing personal info in a coffee shop because there's the attack vector of shoulder surfing where someone peeks over and is like, oh, okay. oh, there's this bank account info. And they could do that. That is a real attack vector. But the whole thing of, like, got to be a little careful from a going through the internet perspective it's it's fine you're 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 falling into h you're using https these companies are you know have their annual pen tests so um it's the shoulder surfing aspect of it that's the the extra risk oh no this is hor no Pri oh, even private. I like how they add privacy protection. So number one, make sure the site is encrypted. Yes, absolutely. HTTPS everywhere. That's a browser add-on. Purchasing a VPN does not add extra protection. While in theory, yes, it does because you have your HTTPS connection, but your DNS traffic is, you know, unencrypted. If you have a VPN, you're just tunneling all of that traffic to a third party, which, you know, God knows whatever they do with that information. Like, it doesn't do anything. Like, it adds the protection of encrypted DNS traffic, but that DNS traffic is just in a different location. So, purchase, purchasing a VPN does not solve this issue. Using a VPN can. And I have a video about setting up your own VPN server at home with a Raspberry Pi. And the yeah yeah now some other tips make sure that that website you're on in a public setting is encrypted you can tell if it has a lock symbol in the url now i will say uh that that lock symbol doesn't doesn't mean anything it just means that data from you to that site is encrypted but a malicious site can also get an https you know and then use https and they can also you know, get the lock and all of that. Like I own paypal.com and it literally forwards to have I been, or not have I been pwned, you've been fished on NIST. And I have like the little gear icon. All I had to do is throw it behind Cloudflare. Oh, you can also purchase a virtual private network, which will then launch an encrypted network that protects you from anyone seeing your activity while you are logged in on public Wi-Fi. That's, that's not true. If you're on a, if you're using HTTPS, people could see packets from this IP address to this IP address, but they can't see the actual data itself. It's encrypted. Now, Floyd's Coffee is separating its Wi-Fi. It is also now uh, adding a time limit to that, how long you can actually use the Internet in the coffee shop. And it is also looking into a service that would monitor Internet use. Okay, so... the. If I could, like, go to this coffee shop and, like, advise them, like, I'll just show you real quick what this attack vector is. So I'm just going to go on Favicon map on Shodan. And, like, this this poor coffee shop was not um, directly targeted. Like, no one's like, Floyd's Coffee Shop, going to look at their security cameras. Like, I will show you how quick it is. And I'm going to start right now. And I will show you how quick it is to access someone's security camera. So starting right now. So I'm going to type in port and I will open up this one. I'll open up this one. I'll open up this one. No clue what's on them. So we will go to browser HTML5. And what's the scary thing about this is they don't know I'm doing this. And I also can enable two-way audio and I can actually talk to them. Again, like, I have no idea who this is. Cool, that one's loading. Browser HTML5. And then another thing you do is you can flip the camera around. So sometimes these people that run these cameras will flip the camera around because someone, like, messed with them. But these cameras have, like, two cameras. So, like, this is a random person. No idea who that is. So I'm going to pause the video right here because I didn't actually give an explanation on how you can actually fix this problem because what I just demonstrated right there is pretty terrifying. Like I was in someone's home 
on their security camera and I could communicate with them, turn on a flashlight and all that. So what can you do to prevent something like this from happening? Well, as you could saw, as you saw that attack that I just did was very low skill. Anyone can do that. Like it, it's, it's insanely easy to do. So what happens is uh, when you type in on Google, like if you type it right now, what is my IP? You will get your IP address. That is your public facing IP address. Now with these cameras, I, I've never had my hands on any of these cameras, but I have a feeling that they say to have remote access to your camera, whether you're, you know, on the other side of the world or whatever, if you want to have access to your camera, you must put it on your firewall or your DMZ or whatever. Um, Basically, what that does is you have your public facing IP address and then an open port associated with that. And that open port would be your camera. Thus, all you would have to do to access your camera is either a, you know, just type it in the web browser. Or if you have like if it has an app and it just connects you to your own IP address and you can view it that way. That's what I have a feeling is going on because. I, it doesn't make sense that all of these people somehow put their cameras on their DMZ. It just doesn't make sense. I have a feeling this is a bigger issue with manufacturers telling consumers bad security practices because I'm not going to blame the consumer here. This, this is a mitigating control that manufacturers can do, whether that's on in their instructions or just having access with no username and password because this should have at least at the bare minimum a username and password so what you could do is go in your router settings and then if you have like a 192.168 or 10.0 or 172 ip address in your dmz or port forwarding or anything like that go ahead and just turn that off because that's exactly what's happening right here on with the video but anyways you get the point like that's probably what happened and someone was, you know, I had admin access on these, you know, cameras without any sort of password. So anyways, that's it for today's video. If you enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification so you get notifications anytime I upload some <laughs> posting video. Uh, and if you could share this with friends, you know, if you're interested in security topics, um, I'm mainly blue team and threat intelligence, do little red team stuff. So I might post some stuff like bug bounty related stuff, pen testing stuff once in a while, but I'll eventually get people to come on my, you know, videos and I could just interview them, talk with them, uh, and learn more about the other areas of security that I just don't have any sort of experience in. So anyways, that's it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye.